Hi everybody, my name is Jim and welcome back to another episode of the Lake Effect Gardener. Happy winter solstice, everybody. Hooray, hooray. We have finally reached the shortest day, longest night of the year, which means from here on out, days are going to start to get longer. I always think that my expectations for that are, are far too big. I want it to happen overnight. It does take a long time for us to notice that the days are getting longer. But just the same, we are at ground zero, and that really, really makes me so happy. Because now we, we begin the great uh, ascent towards spring and summer, and this is my most favorite time of the year. This is also kind of a countdown to Christmas video. I know I have not seen you guys in quite some time, but I have been catching up on life <laughs> As always, I was sick for a, for a couple of weeks, and then I had to play a lot of catch-up from there at school and everything else. Um, I'm finally getting to the point now, this is the week of Christmas where everything's beginning to level off. I've gotten back on top of everything. There are some stuff, you know, that needs to be done as we get to Christmas, um, and I will, you guys will hopefully be seeing this, <laughs> or maybe not, but on Christmas Day, I'm going to be releasing this anyhow. So, I've been very, very busy making sure that I have everything that I need in regards to preparation for Christmas, and I just want to kind of give you a little glimpse, a little day-by-day -day glimpse uh, as to, you know, what my Christmas week is like Thankfully, it's not going to be as frantic as I thought it was going to be. I did a lot of planning and I did a lot of extra work on the side in my spare time to make sure that this week was going to be kind of smooth sailing. I'm still in school. My final day of school is Thursday and then Friday is Christmas Eve. So we go up right to the bitter end. So another reason why I've been making sure to, you know, get everything in order and just makes me feel better to know that I, I'm not going to have to frantically run around and get things done. So I'm sitting here in the back den next to one of my two Christmas trees. And I have to say it's not feeling all that Christmassy <laughs> outside. Um, Looking at the long-range forecast, it's looking like Christmas is going to be warmer than normal and rainy. That's what they're saying. So, no white Christmas for us this year. Which makes me sad because I really feel snow really does put kind of the the cherry on top of the Christmas Sunday for me. I really enjoy having snowfall. It makes it feel more Christmassy, but never mind. A green Christmas is not something out of the ordinary for me or for any of us here in Western New York. Um, if you recall last year, we had like a blizzard <laughs> and I did my little driving video. Um, we had quite a bit of snow Christmas. I think it was Christmas night. And then I did a, a video the day after to show you we had like six inches of snow. No, it was more than that. It was more like three feet of snow. <laughs> but anyways, I'm enjoying, uh, you know, all there is to be had for Christmas. And I thought I would just take you on a little trip <laughs> through my Christmas week and show you just a couple of things that I have going on. Now, 
I had a video for Make Do Monday filmed before I got sick a long time ago. And I had gone into my GoPro camera to see that, um, to edit it and to, you know, post it and everything. Well, I'm having problems with my wireless mic. And I thought I had rectified it. Apparently I didn't. Um, it, it sounded like a lot of scratching and feedback and really awful. You couldn't really hear me say anything. So unfortunately, I mean, I could have, I suppose I could have overdubbed it to explain what I was doing, but I don't know. I didn't think that was going to be very good. Um, it wasn't quite in the moment. So I'm going to have to redo that video, which means I get another meal of California chicken. Um... And the good news is, I'm going to have the time to do it, because I will be on break for vacation for a good week, so the videos will begin to ramp up again. Oh my goodness, what else? So much going on. So I did order um, a new receiver for my wireless mic, and it should be coming in the mail this week, so... Part of this video will be me screaming into the camera, <laughs> and hopefully... A few of them will be on the microphone. So, yeah. So, I've been really, really busy getting gifts taken care of. Um, I didn't purchase a lot of gifts. I did actually do quite a number of homemade gifts. And luckily, those gifts were done while I was down and out with my illness. So... I used the time that I had, responsibly, I suppose you could say, and I wanted to show you, let me see if I can, I've got one on here, I made one for myself. I made a bunch of these for a lot of people, right down here. <laughs> so um, it's been me doing a lot of knitting, and if you know me, you're probably thinking, oh, well, he does that anyways, but I managed to purchase online a few of the um, Christmas ornament patterns that are available through Arna and Carlos, who are those amazing Scandinavian knitters. Um, I think they're based in Norway, and they've got a great YouTube channel. You should check them out if you are a knitter. Actually, if you're a knitter, you've probably already seen them. They're pretty amazing. But anyways, they came out with a book um, of Christmas ornaments, knitted Christmas ornaments. And, um, last year they did kind of a countdown themselves of these ornaments and you can purchase all of them online. And then this year they came out with more. So I actually purchased all of their ornaments and I, I got really, really busy doing just that. So, um, I just have an example here of, of one that I have done. Okay. This pattern is called Nuts. <laughs> Christmas Nuts. Okay, so it has a bit of a, like an acorn type of feel to it. But these are made out of um, alpaca wool. And I purchased these through Rowan, which was the company that they use. I did not use the colors that they used um, because they weren't available. <laughs> I guess a lot of people have been knitting these. Um, so instead of using the red and the white or the green and the white that they were using, I used uh, something. It's It was like an off-white and a, like a wine colored red and I think they look amazing. They really do. They're really, really quick knits. I could do one in a day if I really set my mind to it. But for the most part, I think I spent about two days for each ornament on and off. Okay. Nonstop. Um, I made several of these. I gave a bunch already to my family. Um, we had a brunch. I do a brunch every Christmas as a tradition. My grandparents, who used to live in this house, used to have a Christmas brunch for all of us growing up, and I kind of taken the reins on that and continue that tradition. So we had a big brunch last weekend, and I gave everybody their own little Christmas ornament. And I've done 
a few more for other people as well. So, and since this video will be going out on Christmas, it's not going to be a huge surprise to those people who have yet to receive, the, receive them. So this was really, really, knitting is therapy for me. It really is. And especially when you're doing color work and you're following a pattern, you, you know, you set yourself small goals and things like that. So I'm really happy how these turned out. I think they're wonderful little keepsakes. And they just, they look really, really nice. And they're super soft. This alpaca wood, wool, wood, wool is super, super soft. So I'm pleased. And I still have so many more patterns that I haven't done yet that I'm uh, excited to get stuck in on. So with that being said, um, I guess the first thing I want to show you, which be little clips, little snippets, not much has been going out in the garden. In fact, nothing has been going on in the garden. It's a mud pit, okay? We had some high winds for, there was like three or four nights where we had 70 mile an hour wind gusts. It was crazy. I did go back um, to inspect my tunnel. It wasn't tossed across the yard, which was great news. I did, however, have a massively large branch land on it but no big harm was done. All of my preparations that I did really proved to be a good thing. Um, I'll be going out there probably tomorrow. Um, I'll show you what it looks like because there's some something I have to get up in the tunnel. So I thought I'd maybe bring it back there. But for now, I am going to take you into the kitchen. I received something in the mail today. Um, this is something that I do every single year. And I want to kind of show you what's going on. So let's head into the kitchen and I want to show you exactly what I got in the mail. This is totally a task that I do around Christmas time. I'm just sharing it with you. So let's head in. All right. <laughs> well, it seems like a Christmas present for myself, but it really isn't. It's something that I need every single year without fail. A paper calendar. Yes. So I ordered this online and this one is from the Royal Botanic Garden in Edinburgh, Scotland. Okay, I always go for botanical prints. I just love the way it looks in my in my kitchen. So I get a brand new calendar, paper calendar every single year and the paper calendar is something that I grew up with. Okay, every single year my mother would get a brand new paper calendar and it's always hanging in the same spot in the kitchen next to the sink <laughs> and we always know we always know what to do um, when it comes to my mom's calendar if we're going to take a trip we put it in her calendar if we want to know when my parents are going to be home if they have doctor's appointments etc etc we look in the calendar. If we have family members who are having a birthday, we look in the calendar. My mom is very meticulous when it comes to this and she's been doing it for years and it's something that I myself has adopted. And it's truly one of those things that I do every single year without fail. So uh, let me swing you over to where I have my calendar. Okay. So you can see, I always have it hanging next to the sink, just like mom, okay? Mom keeps hers on this side of the sink. Okay, but I keep mine over here. All right. This calendar that I found, um, this was Elizabeth Blackwell, a curious herbal. Just love the artwork. And this one had lots of interesting stuff in it. And like I said, I love having plants, anything horticultural hanging in my kitchen. So there's some, you know, just some blown up reproductions of the plates that uh, were created for each of these plants. So what I do and 
this is a really great uh, exercise for me. Exercise the old brain. I go back to January. Okay. What's on here? What's this for January? Bitter and sweet something. Can't really read the cursive. Doesn't say. Anyways, I go through and I mark, okay, birthdays, holidays, breaks, stuff like that. I start from the very beginning and I go through and I update everything into the new calendar, okay? So, for example, the very first thing I'm going to mark for Saturday the 1st of January to the 2nd of January is that I'm still on Christmas break. Okay. There we have it. So, days that I don't have school, for example, Martin Luther King Day, I'll just write no school. All right. So I get all the basics in, birthdays, holidays, etc., etc. And then throughout the year, much like my mother does, if I have an appointment, if there's something going on, if there's something that I need reminding of, and being a list maker, this is something that I absolutely love doing only because it gets it out of my brain and onto paper, is to mark it in the calendar, okay? And it's, it's really, really a wonderful exercise in just remembering everything that needs to be done. You're kind of giving it a preview. It's also nice to kind of take a little trip down memory lane and say, oh yeah, last year I had a party on that date. I remember it well. So yeah, this is one of my yearly chores. End of the year, it's usually either next week while I'm on break or the week of Christmas. So this is something that I'm going to be doing right now. So for now, I'm going to say, see you later. I'm going to say so long. Um, and then we will come back again tomorrow. I'm going to show you what I have going on there. So hold tight, friends. We're going to fast forward to tomorrow. Welcome back. It's now Wednesday. I just got home from school and I have a tiny little errand that I need to run. And it's for my mother who every Christmas makes lasagna for Christmas dinner. We all look forward to it. It's absolutely delicious. She only does it once a year. So, you know, it makes it all the more extra special. But her request was that I go and pick some parsley for her. And it's not very often I get to do this because usually my parsley is either A, dead, or B, covered with snow. But the parsley is in the tunnel. So we're going to head into the tunnel and I'm gonna harvest some parsley for her, bring it over to her so she has some nice fresh parsley to put in the lasagna. So let's head over to the tunnel walk through the murky mud um, and I'll show you what's going on in there. All right. Slop, 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 slop. Oh, my Swiss chard is trying to make it. <laughs> Bless its little heart. Oh, gosh, I haven't been back here in so long. So let's see what's going on over here. I'll also show you some of the damage that happened. Back here you can see there's branches here on the ground. Terrible shame. All right. Oops. All right, well, looks like two of my posts came down. <laughs> with another wind event. Never mind. I will get those back up. But I did have, um, I'll show you where I've had a few holes punched into, from that branch, into the uh, tunnel itself. And I got them taped up right away just to keep the weather out and whatnot. So yes, that's, uh, 
I'm not really upset about that because as you know, this is the old tunnel cover from my first tunnel. So that is not a big deal because I have another tunnel cover from, I'm oh, sorry, this is fiddly business. I'm trying to carry things <laughs> along with me here. All right, there we go. Oh. So I have another tunnel cover if I need to. I'm just gonna let this one ride. It seems to be doing okay. And I'm gonna get these boards back up too. That wind must have been absolutely ferocious to have taken them down, so. All right, I've got a little mason jar here and a pair of scissors. And I'm just gonna harvest some of this for my mom. I'm taking the side shoots because parsley will grow from the center. All right. I know she doesn't need a ton, but I do have a lot to spare, so I'll make sure to give her a really, really good, big clump. Maybe a little more, just a smidgen. There's so much on this plant, and I'm happy to share it. There we go. Now I'm gonna fill this with water just to keep it fresh, and then give my mom this adorable little posy of parsley. Mmm, oh, that smells so good. Yes. All right. So, let's see. Anything else for today? I don't think there's anything else today. <laughs> I'm going to go over to Mom and Dad's and drop this off to them. And then by the time I get home, it's going to be dark anyways. Just make myself some dinner and, and relax. This is going to be the real, like, last day for me to relax until after... The Christmas holiday is over. So I will see you all tomorrow. I've got some, let's see, tomorrow is Thursday. I've got a haircut and it's also my last day of school before break. And then um, I hopefully will be getting something else in the mail tomorrow. I'm excited to show you. So um, until then, I will see you all tomorrow. <laughs> so long. Welcome back, everybody. Today is, uh, what are we at now? Thursday? Yes, Thursday. And I just got home from school. So that means I'm officially on winter break. Oh my goodness. Yes, I am on winter break, and I'm very, very excited, and <laughs> I think it's uh, a wonderful occasion to sit back, give myself a minute. and have myself a nice glass of dry red next to the Christmas tree. Now this is the Christmas tree in the front room and um, I got some mail that I want to share with you and the first one was a lovely note that I received from the lovely Nancy. And um, Nancy's been a member of the Lake Effect community for a while now. And she, if you recall, she was the one who sent me that lovely, um, the soap bag that you can 
you know, put your little slivers of soap in and they accumulate and then you can use it to wash yourself. So I love it. Nancy, I use it every day. Most of the days, I should say. The days I decide to get out of my pajamas, I use it and it's lovely. And I, I just, I think of you every single time I have, uh, have a nice little shower. First of all, Mmm, that is tasty. So, um, <laughs> a little feline and wearing a Santa hat. And it says, season's greetings, happy holidays, be safe and well, Nancy. Nancy, same to you, and thank you very, very much. I did get this a while back, um, and I knew that I was going to be doing some kind of filming, and I wanted to share that with everybody. So thank you. Lovely, lovely mail. I also received a nice little parcel in the mail and I know exactly what this is and I'm excited because it is the other component to my wireless microphone. Yay. So that's, that's great. That's going to be wonderful because even though I don't mind shouting into the camera, I do like using the microphone. Uh, it's a little bit easier. I don't have to shout at myself or at the camera. I could also do longer shots and stuff like that. I think I know what happened to my other one. Um, it was during a tour. I think it was maybe September, my September tour. And I was going through the brassicas Nebraska bed where all of my collards were. My collards were absolutely huge. I don't remember, I don't know if you guys remember that or not, but I was trying to, you know, there was, it's right next to a fence and there was a tree there and a bush and I was trying to make my way through it and the cord got caught on one of the collards and the receiver flew off, you know, the clip and onto the ground and then it never quite worked well after that. So anyways, I'll be excited to see if that is going to work out. In fact, I'm probably going to test it on this video after I have a few more sips. The day before break is always the craziest day before um, of, of school. It really is. I teach little ones. So, you know, everybody is just, you know, over the moon. They're excited. They're wired. They're, they're you know... Their minds are elsewhere, and, and as such, it, you know, should be this time of year. We had a lovely breakfast, a faculty breakfast beforehand, lots of lovely treats and everything. It was nice because I didn't have to make myself breakfast this morning. And they had coffee and juice and all sorts of stuff, and, and that was nice. And yeah, the kids were having parties in the classrooms. And I remember doing all that stuff when I was in elementary school, and I remember how how magical that was. So, and I always tell the kids, you know, enjoy this, enjoy these days just like this because, you know, I don't want to be all doom and gloom because when you get older, it all goes away. <laughs> Sometimes it does, but anyways, um, they were all shot out of a cannon and, you know, all the teachers, they have fun and everything. I could see that we're all a little bit tired though. And I mean, we go right up until Christmas Eve, so we're right up to the bitter end. Crazy. So, my phone just fell on the floor. Um, right, so, oh, so much to do. Um, I'm having my parents over for, and my sister and her kids over for dinner tomorrow night, so we're gonna be eating in this room. I have to get everything set up. I have to get some of the food prepared. I'm going to be uh, baking a cake later today. And let me see, are there any other prep things I need to do? I'm not sure. I usually write everything down so I don't have to remember. But anyways, um, I want to just try out this wireless mic and see if it works. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to turn you off for a second and then we'll see if we are golden. So fingers crossed, here we go. Well, isn't this nice? Looks like it worked. Finally, thank goodness. Hold on, I gotta grab my vino. 
My living room is normally not like this, but I do have my table set up for my Christmas Eve celebrations. Um, yeah, so, oh, you know what? I should turn some lights on. That's better. Oh. So the weather forecast has changed again for the holiday and it's going to be even warmer than anticipated they were calling for what they say low low 40s now we're looking at almost 50 degrees on christmas so definitely definitely a green christmas and then the extended forecast is looking rather clear and not terribly cold so that means that um during my way, my week off, I mean, usually what I would do is a lot of indoor housework because the weather is usually not all that great. But it seems to me that I will also be doing some work outside, getting some more cleanup. Because after we had those windstorms, you know, everybody's leaves, all the people who didn't take care of their outdoor leaves and, and whatnot, they all blew into my yard. And normally I'm very much a proponent of leaving a lot of the leaves down in the ground because it's good for wildlife. Um, but my front yard, which isn't all that big, um, it is coated. It is absolutely coated. And um, I do want to get some of them, uh, those leaves up. I do want to get some of the branches cleaned up and stuff like that. So um I did get another parcel in the mail, which was really, really exciting. A couple of them, actually. And that was, all of my seeds have come in, which is wonderful. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to unveil all of the seeds that I'm going to be planting until I do another video. But um, they are here. There are plenty of them. I'm really, really excited. But I've got to get through this Christmas holiday before I start diving into those. So... All right. Well, it's off to go wrap some gifts, drink some wine. I'm going to put some nice music on and uh, also get some food prepared for tomorrow. So hang in there, folks. Tomorrow is almost here. I've got a couple things that I was going to do tomorrow that I was going to share for you. But um, until then, hang on tight. We'll see you on Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. Well, I just woke up and I found this snow. I didn't think we were supposed to get any. And I don't think it's going to last. It's supposed to warm up to the mid 40s today. So, but what a nice little treat to wake up to. Yay. Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. All right. I'm going to go make my tea and wake up some more. And uh, I'll be back in a few minutes. Seconds, hours, I'll see you in a minute. So I'd like to share a little recipe, part of my annual um, Christmas Eve dinner. I always make a dish that uh, my parents and my sister absolutely love. It's called beans and greens. I'm sure there's a, a more official name for it, but it's a super easy side dish for your meal. It's really, really, really delicious. I do enjoy it and it's not terribly difficult. It's actually quite kind of quick. Now, currently my parents will not be here until for another six hours. So yes, I'm making it six hours beforehand, but this is one of those meals that I feel really taste a lot better once it's had time to think a little while. So I want to show you in front here, you're not seeing me because I'm still in my loungers, but here are the ingredients that you need and not very much. Okay, so I've got about five cloves of garlic minced in this container here. Um, I've got crushed red pepper, tomato paste in a tube, what's left of it. I've got some of my canned tomatoes. All right. I also have a very large container of my homemade pasta sauce. I'll explain why I've got this in a bit some olive oil. I've got two containers here. Actually, it's three containers, two tins of cannellini beans, 
and 110 over here. You can use any type of bean you like. This works for everything. And then I have three large bunches of Swiss chard that I have taken the stems out of and chopped up, okay? And I know it seems like an awful lot, but we're going to be steaming this and it will just shrivel down into nothing. Now, the reason why I have two different sauces, two different beans, is because I'm going to be making one that is vegetarian, and then I'm making one that is vegan. My uh, niece and nephew both have food allergies, so my sauce has uh, pecorino romano cheese in it, and they can't have that. So I'm going to be making two separate portions, I guess you could say, one for my niece and nephew so that they can enjoy it and one for everybody else. So that's why I have these separated, everything like that. Now, if you are cooking with for somebody who is perhaps not uh, able to eat anything with cheese in it, it's really, really important. Anything that you do, if you're cooking with for people who have any type of um, dietary uh, restrictions, that you keep everything really, really clean. I worked in food service for a very long time. I know all too well about making sure that you do not cross-contaminate. So I've been very, very careful not to do any of that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get this steamed off and then I'm going to take you over to the stove and show you what I'm gonna be doing with this. Okay, I have everything that I need over here at the stove and I just love this old stove just from the standpoint that it has these lovely lids that I can put down and I can put stuff on top of it. Gotta love it. So I have two separate containers here. Containers, they're pans. Two separate pans here. This is going to be my allergy safe pan. This is going to be the one with my homemade sauce. You can see over here how much the Swiss chard has, has steamed down. So three bunches is definitely not you know, a liberal amount. If you want more, you could add more. And that's what's nice about this recipe. It's completely flexible. You could add more beans, you could add more sauce, you could, you could you know, do it to whatever your taste is. So I'm gonna turn on the heat, both sides, and I'm going to add olive oil to both of the pans. Now don't be shy. I'm just eyeing this right now, but it's really just to have a good kind of uh, layer along the bottom of the pan. And those need to heat up for a little bit. The next thing that you're gonna add, and I can do this now because it'll, it'll take a little time anyways, is some of the minced garlic. So I'm not gonna go crazy on this one, okay? I don't know, there's maybe like a clove, a clove and a half there, and then the rest of it I'll put over here. All right. Mmm, it smells amazing. So we want to get the garlic nice and brown. Okay, so this one's moving faster than this one because this is a much heavier pan. But no matter, it'll, good. It, it'll be spaced out well. All right, to that, I'm going to add some of these crushed red pepper flakes. Not gonna go crazy. I think I may be one of the very few people in this family that really, really likes heat in my food. So, just a smidgen, nothing crazy. All right. And putting it in the oil now is going to... <laughs> Ta-da! It's all done, look at that. Thank you, GoPro camera. I really appreciate you cutting out in the middle of it. Oh, good grief. Well, as you can see, all is done. <laughs> just like magic. So essentially what you missed, <laughs> what got lost in the ether was after the garlic and the um, 
pepper, the crushed red pepper had a minute. I added some of the tomato paste to each of them. Okay, gave it a stir, gave it a stir. Once that was taken care of, I added the sauce. Okay, I added the regular sauce, the um, tomatoes here for my niece and nephew, and then I added my sauce over here. I brought it to a boil. Okay, brought it to a really good simmer. I added the Swiss chard to both of them, using separate hands, of course. Okay, and then to that I added the beans. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess this is a really quick version. It's just as well, this video is gonna be insanely long. However, um, so now everything is taken care of. I am going to lightly salt and pepper this just lightly I'm, I'm not a huge salt and pepper person i know it's there it's good for seasoning and things like that but i'm not a huge for myself a huge salt person and i always have salt and pepper at the table for everybody so if they want to add to what is there totally fine just mix this in <clears throat> You know, using my homemade sauce over here adds quite a bit of a dimension to it because the sauce is cooked with, you know, basil and oregano and some lovely crushed fennel seed and, of course, the delicious formaggio, the Romano cheese. So this one's a lot thicker than this one, okay? The sauce was thicker to begin with. So this is ready and I'm gonna let this sit. This is just the crushed tomatoes, and so I'm going to let this simmer on a high heat for a good 10 minutes. It's gonna soften the beans, and it's also going to get rid of some of that moisture, um, the juice. I want this to be a little bit thicker, so it turns more into a side dish rather than a soup. So, there it is, beans and greens we've got the safe version, vegan version, and we've got the vegetarian version that has a little bit of cheese in it. And it's super easy, and it's a super cheap meal. I love just to eat this as a regular meal. It's, it's really tasty and delicious. I'm all showered and ready to go. Uh, my family should be here in about 50 minutes. So I've got some last minute touches I want to do with the food and I'm going to get the fireplace lit, the candles lit and everything like that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this <laughs> little saunter into my life the week of Christmas. I just thought it'd be kind of interesting, you know, to put out there, but it's been a relaxing day. Uh, I did spend about a half an hour or so. Um, on the live chat with Richard and Paul. So that was a really, really nice treat. And then I just kind of cleaned up, got myself cleaned up, and I'm just going to now officially sign off. I know this was quite a, a bit of a long video, but, you know, a lot to squeeze in in just a couple of days here and there. So I want to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas if you're across the pond and, and hope you all have a chance to spend time with loved ones or at least be in contact with them. And I will see you all really, really soon. I'm going to be closing with just a quick round into the living room, just show you how everything looks with the table set and the fire ablaze. So Merry Christmas, everybody. I will see you all really, really soon. Take care, and I, I'm so happy that you got to join me this week. So long. <laughs>